Hello, everybody. My name is Matt Hoffman. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I am the regional agronomist for the On Farm Network as part of the Iowa Soybean Association. And today I'm going to go over some of our strip till research data that was presented at our 2019 farmer research tour. So, to start off, a little tillage did you know? The NRCS estimates that Iowa loses six tons of soil per acre per year. So at this rate, each generation over a 40 year farming career will pass down one inch less topsoil to the next generation. One of our main goals at the On Farm Network is to increase farmer profitability for farmers in Iowa. And to do this, you really need to examine every operation of your farming system, which includes tillage systems. So lower cost tillage systems such as no-till or strip-till may actually be more profitable even if they are slightly less yielding. And as well, less tillage equals less erosion, which also results in improved soil structure. So when I think of soil erosion, I primarily think of erosion via water. However, I took these pictures in central Iowa last winter during our polar vortex. And you can see uh, a no-till field on the left and conventional till on the right. Um, and while the ground is supposedly frozen, you can still see how much uh, that good topsoil is being lost to the road ditches. So after hearing some of that information, you might be thinking, well, why till at all then? Well, no-till simply isn't for all soils. Uh, tillage does provide benefits such as soil drying and soil warming, uh, which are very important come planting season. Tillage can also be helpful for weed control, especially today when we have a lot of resistant weeds. Um, tillage can certainly help with that. A couple of fallacies um, regarding tillage that I come across is that tillage uh, will reduce compaction and increase yield. I certainly don't see that all the time, so um, that uh, I guess had us set out and try to explore strip till as a happy medium for those guys that are used to conventional tillage, um, considering no till or have tried no-till and it hasn't worked out for them. So we want to explore strip-till as a happy medium. High level overview of strip-till. Um, you're tilling six to 10 inch strips either in the fall or spring. Some guys do do it both fall and spring. So by doing this, you're only tilling where needed. Um, those strips are where the uh, succeeding crop is gonna be planted at. You can effectively place your nutrients within these strips in, this, in a single pass. You can see from this picture the strip is exposed soil, that residue is pushed off to the side between the rows. So you're getting the benefits of conventional tillage in that you're getting soil dry, warming and drying benefits, yet you're keeping that residue in the field, um, which is going to result in less erosion. And being that you're not tilling up every square foot of the field, uh, you can cover more acres per hour. This video here. Uh, show some of our trials getting put out. This unit being used is a 12 row soil warrior unit from environmental tillage systems that they lent us in Northwest Iowa to get some of these trials put out, um, give new guys exposure to how strip till works, what a unit runs like. You can see here, I believe we're going about seven miles an hour. This is a dual bin system, so it has the ability to put a couple different fertilizers down in the strip. However, for the trial purpose, we did not utilize the nutrient placement to eliminate any uh, bias that might be caused by deep banding of the fertilizer versus broadcast. So an overview of the trials that we completed. We did seven strip till versus no till trials and six strip till versus conventional trials. So we had a good balance between each. The strip tillage was all done in the fall of 2017. Uh, and then the conventional was followed that spring. So spring of 2018. All trials were corn, corn in 2018. And eight out of the 13 trials were put out with this ETS soil warrior unit. Us agronomists monitored early stand differences. We took aerial imagery during the growing season as well as collecting harvest data at the end of the year for analysis. All trials had side-by-side -side replication with strips going the entire length of the field. So to jump into our strip-till versus no-till data, um, seven trials. 
Again, strips were put out in fall of 2017. There was no deep placement of the fertilizer using the strip till unit. Um, all fields had the same, same rate of fertilizer broadcast across the entire field. Six trials were corn on beans and one trial was corn on corn. A few pictures from some of these trials. You have strip till on the left, no till on the right. Um, those corn seedlings on the right hand picture. The no till is actually on the left. You can see it's got a little shorter root. It's a little lagging behind the strip till seedling on the right. However, when I came back two weeks later, you really couldn't find any differences in the field. So our results showed a 7.3 bushel advantage to strip till over no till on average. Six out of the seven trials had a positive advantage to strip till. The one trial, uh, location 37, had a 5.7 bushel disadvantage of strip till compared to no till. So that had, a had us a little perplexed. Upon investigation, we found um, this farmer was trying to utilize WASP GPS with the strip till unit, and he had a really hard time st uh, staying on the strips with the planter. So a lot of times, that seed was planted at the edge of the strip, um, in the strip, a lot of times outside of the strip. So we believe that um, resulted in negative difference for the strip till unit. So our recommendation, if you are going to try strip till, make sure you're utilizing RTK guidance. Our strip till versus conventional trials, we had six trials. Again, strip till was done fall 2017. Conventional was done in the spring of 2018. In this set, we did have one trial that had that utilized a full strip till unit and deep banded the fertilizer within the strip. However, all others were broadcast across the field. All these trials were corn on beans. Um, you can see here in the picture, all trials were clustered in Northwest Iowa around Clay County. Again, that's where we had the unit available and where we put these trials out at. Pictures here showing uh, some of the trials, what the fields look like at planting. So the data here showed almost a six bushel advantage to strip till. All six of these trials um, had a positive advantage using strip till. I mentioned that we had one trial that utilized uh, deep placement of the fertilizer in the strip. That's pretty easy to pick out in the data here. You can see location 24 had an almost 20 bushel advantage of strip till over conventional. So it really shows the, the potential of strip till if you are utilizing it to its full, its full capabilities. So when we set out to do these trials, my gut feeling was that strip till was gonna have an advantage over no till and probably be neck and neck with conventional. So had me wondering why such a big advantage of strip till even over conventional, almost a six bushel advantage. Well, if any of you listening are from Northwest Iowa and remember 2018, 2018 planting season was a very wet, um, a lot of times delayed planting uh, time period. Um, a lot of the fields were borderline unfit for spring tillage a lot of times the tillage resulted in some smearing and some compaction, and I believe that to be the reason um, for the big advantage of strip till over conventional is that when there's some smearing and compaction, that seed really lags behind um, and falls behind and stays a little behind the entire season. So as I said earlier, one of our main goals in the on-farm network is to improve profitability of Iowa corn and soybean farmers. Um, economics and tillage trials are always difficult to quantify. However, um, weighing some of the pros and cons, strip till, it does use slightly less labor, fuel, horsepower compared to conventional tillage. It does give you the advantage uh, of being able to band your fertilizer in the same, in one pass. But strip till does need high end GPS. Like I said, we recommend RTK. Um, your labor might need to be a little more skilled because where those strips are going is where you want to be planting at. can have a higher equipment cost if you need to buy another unit, um, and you do run the risk of possible washouts in inclement weather. So on this slide I have 
uh, some strip till versus conventional economics on the left and strip till versus no till on the right. Now these numbers are ballpark estimates um, coming from Iowa State University's um, estimates as well as pulling some custom farmers for what their rates might be um, particular with the variable rate P and K operations. The first number I want you to look at is just the profit from a almost six bushel yield advantage is almost $22 um, profit advantage of strip till over conventional. And second numbers I want you to look at if you're doing a two pass say a chisel plow and field cultivate your cost for tillage alone is going to be higher than a strip till operation um, being utilized with variable rate P and K and nitrogen. So there's advantage there as well. On the right, uh, strip till versus no till, you're looking at almost uh, $27.5 profit advantage per acre um, just from the yield advantage. However, you do have that added cost of the strip till unit, um, estimating $17 an acre. That leaves you at over $10 an acre profit advantage of strip till versus no till. So some key takeaways from this data. Um, strip till certainly does look like a good option for farmers that are unable to no-till but do want some sort of tillage. Strip till use slightly less labor, lower fuel costs, and the ability to apply fertilizer in a single pass is a big advantage compared to conventional. Strip till does leave more residue cover than conventional, so decreased erosion um, at the same time you're improving your soil structure. This data shows a yield benefit for strip till over both no-till and conventional and it looks like a viable option to reduce tillage if your finances allow. My final comment would be if you have the ability to try out a unit before you buy it, uh, see if a dealership has one available or a neighbor, um, try, try it out before you just uh, jump in and make, the, make that big purchase. They aren't cheap units so give it a shot, um, hopefully it works out for you and Certainly, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us at the On Farm Network, and we hope you have a good, good growing season this year.